Hi everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. This video today is on a 2007 BMW Series 1. Uh, is it 2007? Yeah, 2007 uh, Series 1 with uh, the 2 liter diesel engine. And um, and basically this car came to me, the car was dropped about 10 minutes ago and the car came to me as an on-runner so it came on uh, one of those um, RAC vans and the car has been brought to me from elsewhere um, and um, I want to show you uh, what they have done um, to try to diagnose this and um, and then we'll go from there just hold a second because there's something here I haven't seen okay all sorted so we're still we're still showing the address right at the bottom so I had to fold it back the address where this came from so let's gonna go through uh, their diagnostics so here is a uh, one of my labels because stickers because underneath there there's a name of a person with a phone number and uh, I don't want to show you that but over here there's nothing about the company so basically that that's what they did uh, Possible fuel pump injectors, please investigate. Then the label they carried out was um, a 10 vehicle for no ignition, a code read and ESL fault, gas reset module, car tries to start but only cranks and fuel pump runs flat out. Uh, don't know which fuel pump we are talking about, uh, if it's the tank one or the, 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 the main one. The main one only runs at the speed engine, so at the engine speed. So most likely we are talking about the one in the tank. Could not could not communicate with DME. After three attempts at starting, the ESL faults again and vehicle needs a hard reset. Vehicle has been left with ESL working. Right, I'll leave it here for a few seconds so you guys can pause and read again if you want. Okay, that was the bill. So doesn't start, that's what they did. We do have ignition. So uh, as you can see, I can hear the pump in the tank going. Let me turn this off. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. So the pump in the tank is constantly going. Oh, it's still running. Let me think. Let me. It's the first time I'm turning the ignition on, guys. By the way, I haven't done any work on this. I haven't even opened the bonnet. And one thing that is strange to me. Let me wait. Because I can hear the fuel pump in the tank. Carry on going. It should be off by now. Uh, that's weird. It's still going. Still going. That pump should be off by now. It shouldn't run for that long. Wow, that's... let me... Okay, pump goes off. Let me turn ignition on again. Okay. Is running again. We do have fuel according to the gauge. So I'm gonna pause and see for how long this pump runs. Okay, and that's just weird. That's I'm intrigued. So I've turned the pump, the ignition on since I paused the video last, and I've plugged in the max ECs, turned it on. The pump is still going. I don't know, you probably can't hear it, but the pump is still going. It should be off. It, it runs for a few seconds to build up pressure. If you don't start the engine, the pump should go off. It's just carry on going. It's, I wanna, I wanna, that's one of the first things I want to do 
is exactly that. I want to see. That's going to diagnose this. Uh, let me go straight to BMW. It's going to be quicker. Okay. So I want to see what that pump is doing. Now you see, carry on's going. It just doesn't shut off. Okay. Mm. Intrigued. Right, I just quick <laughs> went outside. I just thought, what if the fuel is going on the, on the floor? Uh, but no, it's not going on the floor. Uh, I can't see nothing on the floor. The pump, however, is still going. It didn't turn off for the last five minutes or so. So let's gonna go to here, control unit. Let me turn this off. And I wanna go what that's gonna be, maybe body, perhaps. Where is that? Silly boy. Fuel pump. Read codes. Okay. No message from DME. It's a present code as you can see. Live data. Uh, measured values. 9 amps voltage. Current fuel pump, 9 amps. That's a little bit. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Some strange noises when I go into there. Control values. All on maximum, look at that. Mm. It's gonna go back, back. So he's telling me. That I have no communications with the engine ECU. And indeed, I don't. This is a manual. Sorry, guys. That's gonna go car. It's gonna go to the cars. Let's see if I have the same code. Cars immobilizer bus fault. Cars immobilizer bus fault. Most likely, this is because I'm not having. Communications with the engine ECU, but why is not telling me that either? It's gonna go So DME DME DME, okay, so we don't have communications with the DME and that's gonna be our first problem I'm not even too bothered with uh, no faults on that one. He might doesn't need. I want another one that needs the. It's gonna be. It might be foot twelve too, but no faults. So, do I have active steering at the APS? Well, 
once again. Engine. So we have a DME that is offline. And that's the first thing we're going to look at. Um, interestingly enough, I do have engine light coming on on a dash. Don't know if that's, it should come up even. Hang on, let me go to... Instrument cluster. Sorry guys, but I'm trying to figure out what's going on as I'm recording. Uh, start and stop function. DME. Not present. Transmitter cast. I don't know what they have been doing on the cast. Uh, DME, DME, guys, we have this, the DME most likely is offline, and we're going to have to try to figure out what is wrong with it, so that's the first thing I'm going to do, check the DME, connections, power in the grounds, all that good stuff, uh, perhaps uh, check the can line, make sure it's good, and then we'll go from there. Okay guys, and in about 10 minutes, I think I found the problem that someone couldn't find in two weeks. So I'm gonna show you. So we removed that cover in there and look what's in there. Can you see that shiny stuff at the bottom? Do you know what that is? Water. And when you look at this ECU, look, there's clear signs that's been water here. The water is really low at the moment. I mean, the water is right at the bottom now, but I think the drain is blocked. And obviously that's been filled in with way more water. And that's what caused this failure. So let's gonna open this ECU and uh, and oh dear, see what we can do. And see what we can do. Okay, and one left. No, two left. This is used because they are uh, encapsulated in there. They don't have, or usually they don't have sealant, so they are not sealed. So, put the screws in here. Okay, surprise, surprise. Let's gonna see what's in here. Oh, I'm gonna miss a screw, did I? Oh, they have that. Uh, hold on. Hold oh, on. They don't have a screw, they don't have, they are not sealed, but they have this um, thermal compound that seals in in this side, it kind of glues it together. So I'm gonna pause the video and crack this open, then I'll show you. Okay, and I crack the ECU open, and look at that, my guys. Look at that. Oh, absolutely destroy it absolutely destroyed um, oh I, I don't know what to do even if I clean this even if I clean this um, I think look where the water has been right up here I, I try it's, oh, it's corroded everywhere And uh, is this my EPROM? I hope it's not my EPROM down here. Oh dear. If this is my EPROM, then I'm done. No, it doesn't look like my EPROM. No, it doesn't look like. Um, it's a tree core. It has an internal EPROM, isn't it? Oh, shit. Oh, crap. 
Right, let's gonna take this to the shed, give it a good clean, and see what we can do. Uh, I still need to split these two sides. Sorry, I was not even looking at what I was showing you. So let's gonna take this to the to the shed and see what we can do with this. Okay, um, I don't know what I was showing you on the last clip. I was a little bit, but okay. So let's gonna full of water. Okay, so let's gonna. I already split both parts. Okay, and obviously there is water on this side, or there is water damage on this side as well. Uh, a lot of corrosion, blah 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 blah. Um, but what I'm concerned about is this side. This side is really bad. It is really, really bad. So the first thing we're gonna do, guys, is with some alcohol, clean the board, um, clean the board, see if there's any broken lanes, uh, reflow the board, reflow all this, um, and, and go from there, hope for the best. Um, if this doesn't work, I think I'm lucky enough, just hold a second, guys, I think I'm lucky enough to have yes I do have a spare module I have a spare ECU here look at that uh, I just don't know if it's the same part number uh, it's, it's different no it's not the same ECU damn it it's, it's, it's a different module it's from a 2.0 as well. It's from a it's from a 320, I think it is. But the the is it is different. Yeah, it's it's definitely. I mean, the, the, it might be that, that it would work. I don't know. It's from a two liter. It's from a 320 diesel. Um, with the, the two liter diesel, um, and. Um, and that was a 2000 and I can't remember the year of the car now. Obviously it is different so it might not gonna work so we need to recover this. We really need to recover this. So let's gonna clean it and see how it looks afterwards. Okay and I've cleaned the board and it's like always once you clean it it doesn't look let me push the light it doesn't look that bad so this is this side uh, the damage was not very extensive on this side anyway, but even this side look at that. I know it's still Wet from the alcohol, but straight away. It looks much better. We have obviously here where this uh, chip is uh, it looks like It's gonna need a good Soldering here But everything else straight away looks much better. So what I'm going to do now is Using one of these, yes, it's here. Using one of these uh, fiberglass pens, uh, we're gonna obviously try to get rid of this sort of black uh, uh, corrosion from the pins that doesn't come off. So we can then uh, reflow the board because if we try to reflow the board like this, the solder will not will not adhere to it. So we need to clean it first before we try anything else. Uh, I'm quite confident that we might gonna get successfully on this. Um, the only thing I'm not sure is about, and I've I've showed you this in the past, is about these little holes that obviously is a passage of the circuit into the other side, and most likely this is gonna be a multi-layer board as well. So, oh. We'll see how it goes, but let's gonna carry on cleaning this and reflow the board and see what happens. Okay, uh, it's not very good because I've just noticed, I don't know if the phone is gonna be able to capture that, but I've just noticed that, let me see if the phone is gonna capture that. It might be the leg over here, this leg right there, the third one, one, two, you see, is completely gone. It's not even attached on this chip. Uh, I don't think this is a... Almost. 
Will these be the Eperom? Uh, I need to check, but I'm going to remove this chip and try to see if that leg was in use. Oh dear. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Okay. Okay. Hey guys, chip removed. And guess what this chip is, guys? Guess what? So I'm going to tell you what's written on it. Uh, it's all you need to know, really, is uh, 104... So 104-2A. And it's an ELMOS. E-L-M-O-S. You know what that is, guys? It's the CAN transceiver. No wonder I have no communications. So, let's gonna get hold of another CAN transceiver, which hopefully will work the same way. I should have some other CAN transceivers in other boards, other ECUs, I hope. And let's gonna get another one here. Um, that pin in there was in use, obviously. We're gonna clean this a little bit better, right there. See if we can still solder something in here and see if that brings my communications back. So let's gonna see if I have another one of those somewhere in here. Can can maybe this one can oh crap. Uh, there's one there, but I don't know if that's gonna work. Okay, let's gonna get a can transceiver that's gonna be identical. I need to check the pinouts of that one, check the PDFs. They should all work the same, but I just wanna make sure if I would find one that was exactly the same, then that would be easier, but let me search and we'll get back to you. And I need to see the difference of what comes up on a dash. Look at that. Pump stopped. And... Ta-da! Read codes. I'm gonna ignore any codes in here. For obvious reasons. It's gonna erase this. Yes. Okay. Read codes. Globplex. Not really worried with that. It's gonna go back. Obviously, I do now, but um, instrument cluster with codes. Not present. Look at that. Bingo. Now, I'm going to show you how the ECU is in there. So, let me. I'm not going to attempt to start the engine yet because if I do, the ECU most likely is going to fall over. So all I'm going to show you now is, hold on, I'm going to show you how the ECU is in there, and, uh, oh dear, hold a sec. So the ECU is here, just like this, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it back to the shed, and I'm going to show you exactly what I had to do to get the ECU back to life. Guys, I placed this U uh, in a way that I can attempt to start the engine because I'm going to try to finish the car today and uh, and basically what I'm going to show you is that the car runs absolutely perfect and um, and then I'm going to show you uh, back on a shed I'm going to show you exactly what I've done to this U and from there it's going to be only close this U put everything back together, all those plastics, all that stuff and give the car back to the guy so but because it's gonna I'm gonna try to finish it today because I'm working over the weekend and uh, I would like to give the car back to him today but I need to leave in a bit because I, I, I need to pick up my girls from school so it's gonna be dark and then I don't want to be here on the dark to show you this so I'm gonna show you that the car starts absolutely fine as you can see okay with no engine lights no nothing uh, it works absolutely perfect it works fine um, so all we're gonna do now is like I said when I come back I'm gonna show you in the shed exactly what I had to do to the ECU we're gonna clean the case 
um, we're gonna clean all the paste we're gonna clean everything close the ECU and um, I'm gonna try I'm gonna have to I'm gonna clean that um, that box where the ECU is stored because obviously the drain there is a little drain at the bottom and most likely that is blocked so that's why it filled up with water so we're gonna have to take that off clean everything but most likely I'm gonna have to be doing this with a light in there because it's gonna get dark in a minute and um, and uh, and therefore I'm gonna only end the video when I show you what I've done to the ECU but guys problem fixed I don't know why the the, the other garage could not find that in two weeks time yeah two weeks I found the problem in 10 minutes true that I've been for about it's now a half two so 11 I've been about three hours working on ECU uh, to get it fixed um, and uh, but yeah but guys job done so all you're gonna do now is is like I said I'm gonna show you what I've done and uh, and then we're gonna finish this off okay um, so on my last clip before I showed you the engine running before this last one uh, I said I'll be looking for a new uh, transponder to uh, transceiver sorry uh, to replace the the one that had a broken leg unfortunately after looking through all my ECUs the ones I have here for uh, spares or repairs I didn't want to open the one I've showed you in there earlier the one from the 320 uh, because that one is a, is a good working ECU, I didn't, I didn't want to touch that one uh, but I couldn't find one, so uh, I've, I've managed to get that one um, repaired, I'm going to show you everything I've done um, and um, and I just hope the camera is going to focus enough so, the transponder, uh, transponder, the transceiver is right there in the corner and as you can see, this is, <laughs> there is a little bit of uh, jump wires in there so the first thing so on this four pin transceiver come on focus okay so all the pins on this side they were good on that side as you have seen one of the pins was corroded completely I've showed you earlier go back on the video and have a look also the pad on the PCB was also completely corroded so what I've done is I've scraped a little bit of the insula of the encapsulation of the chip to expose a little bit of the leg of the the material that was going that goes from the leg to inside the ship so I've scraped a little bit just until I had enough to solder this wire then I've traced the lane and the lane came to this uh, capacitor here to the opposite side but then from there comes to this testing uh, pad so that's where I um, when I have soldered this wire then I found that uh, this uh, I don't know how the picture is this resistor here which the original resistor is actually here this resistor is burned is open line is is gone so I've replaced that that is a 1.6 K ohms I couldn't find one with 1.6 as you can see this one is a little bit shorter as well because the other one was would go from here all the way to the pad uh, this is uh, 1.5 when I was taking that one out the pad on this side came attached to it completely gone so I had to run a wire from there to the end of the transistor the resistor and from the resistor back to where the that would carry on coming to here so I put a wire from there to here and that is the section I've reflowed a few couple things around but this was the section fixed okay uh, and uh, the next thing I've done was as I was measuring all these little passage that goes from one side to the other I find out that this main one that comes here it didn't have continuity to the other side so there is a wire so I've scraped a little bit of the uh, uh, insulation here soldered a wire get it through the hole to the other side and then did the same in there soldered in there 
uh, and that's all I've done. Uh, ECU is back on, everything else is fine. There is only one place where I'm going to put another wire because I don't like the way it looks, which is right there. You see right in there? It's a test point here and most of the copper is already gone. So I'm going to put a wire from there all the way to here. And that's the last work I'm going to do on this ECU. And then I'm going to clean the board. Uh, I might going to spray some lacquer to keep it water tight. Um, I usually, I don't know if I ever showed you that I do that sometimes. Uh, where's the lacquer? It's somewhere here, there it is. So that's the one I use. And this basically leaves a kind of a layer of, uh, it's a lacquer basically, protects from moisture, from everything. Um, I don't plan to work on this issue again, so that's what I'm gonna do. And um, and that's it really guys, so, and that was it for this repair. And uh, all I'm gonna do now, as I said, repair that, uh, that last bit I've showed you. Uh, clean the board, put some lacquer, uh, clean the ECU. Uh, the inside, as you can see, is all crappy. Uh, close the ECU, and then I'm gonna look to see why that uh, case where the ECU is uh, filled up with water. Most likely, the drain is gonna be blocked right at the bottom, so we're gonna clear that out. And still not very dark, I just wanna show you that. I'm gonna minute. Okay, it's better like this, so you can see all the water. See, so obviously the drain from there is blocked. So when it rains, that just starts to fill up with water until obviously reached the ECU. So we're gonna clean that and then put everything back on. And um, and that's it. Problem fixed. So nothing else to say. The only thing to say is I hope there's some information on this video that you guys find it, uh, find it interesting. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions, any comments, you know how it works. Put them below. And like always guys, thank you for watching.